Hey guys, we got our uh, biggest episode yet. He's a UFC and tough veteran, Mr. Hader Hassan from American Top Team. It's a special episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and press the bell notification down below. Let's check it out. Hello guys, it's Hamad Mia from MMA Diagnosis, and uh, today I have a very special guest, man. This is a big deal for the podcast. He's uh, competed in the UFC. He's uh, competed on the Ultimate Fighter. He's also competed in other major promotions, Strike Force, M1 Global, Titan FC, and is now currently with Brave Combat Federation, uh, Mr. Hader Hassan. How are you, man? Hey, what's up, brother? Awesome to be here, bro. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to show me some love, man. You're the man. Yeah, man. Um, so, uh, Generally, in my interviews, what I like to do is I like to start with a story, right? So we'll start with the origin story, yeah? So an Arab kid from Florida. So how would you describe your childhood growing up then? Yeah, man, you know, uh, my, my parents are uh, Iraqi. Uh, uh, they grew up in Baghdad. They came here in the 70s. Uh, my father was a uh, physician here in town, re uh, retired. And uh, so I just grew up, you know, that strict uh, Arab culture, yeah. school, school. Make sure you get good grades. You know, you're either going to become a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, one of those type of uh, type of things, you know. But uh, I grew up an athlete, bro. I've been playing sports my whole life, man. You know, since I was a kid, I played football, wrestled. You name the sport. This season in Florida, the weather's always warm, so it's uh, every there's never a bad season. So it just goes from the next sport to the next sport. So I, I grew up always competing, and uh, I went to college at Florida State. I, I fin after I finished my studies. I, uh, I was working for a pharmaceutical company, uh, but I was just very bored. I, uh, I had missed training. I had missed competing. My whole life was, com was competing. Uh, and my brother, he, he fights also, Mehdi. Uh, he was playing football at Georgetown. And uh, since his freshman year at Georgetown, he was like, if I don't, if I don't make it to the NFL, I want to fight. And uh, so we went to the NFL combine. We missed the combine by like a tenth of a point. Wow. And, uh, and then we ended up, luckily, American Top Team was just 15 minutes away from our house. So we came back, and uh, that Monday we went to American Top Team, and um, it was actually the week following when Pitbull had knocked out GS. I mean, had knocked out uh, Matt Hughes with that flying knee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Like it was that Saturday when he knocked out Matt Hughes with that flying knee, and then uh, that Monday I came to the gym and I was like, "Oh my God, there's Pitbull. There's <laughs> this guy. There's," and I was just like, "That's when I knew, like, man, this this place is like, uh, this is it." And after my first training session, I did like a, I did a, the amateur Muay Thai class, kickboxing class. And after my first training session, I was like, bro, this is so <laughs> awesome. You know, I just had it reignited all those passions, man. And uh, all those competitive juices that had been suppressed off in college and stuff. And uh, I was like, me and my brother, like, yo, we got to make the pro team. We got to make the pro team. So uh, we just stuck with it, man. And about after about six to eight months, um, we got put in the gauntlet to make the pro team. And the gauntlet is just like the shark tank. And they just put like Tiago Silva, Wilson Govea, Alessio Sakara, oh. uh, Villafort, all on us. And bro, and, and, and this was our oh, first time. guys, man. Yeah, this was all when they were all in the top yeah, 10, yeah, top, yeah. you know? Tiago Silva was going to be fighting Leota Mishida. Oh, know? yeah, 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 yeah. You know? see, uh, it was one of the UFC 90s, right? One of them called, yeah, yeah, he was just... Yeah. It was when, like, you know, every, those guys were the yeah, creme de la creme at that time. And this was my first time sparring, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, just, I was just <laughs> I grew up playing football. I was tough. I was mentally strong. I knew, like, I could hit hard, and I was an athlete. So I was like, all right, bro, the first, like, six seconds of the sparring, my brother ends up knocking out one of the, one of the guys. That was uh, – that wow. at the time – I was like one of like the team bullies. He's one of my best friends now, but we laugh about it now. But at the time, anytime a new guy came to the gym, they put that guy on him. And within like the first, like no joke, 10 seconds, my brother ends up knocking him out with, a, with like a right hand or a left hook. He how fell down. Your, how big is your brother? Is he? Uh, uh, he, he fights uh, light, heavy, and heavy. Light, heavy. I was going to get into your brother later, but yeah, I can't go. <laughs> yeah, so, it, was, it was crazy because then all of a sudden, like, when he got, when the guy got knocked out and all of a sudden, like everyone came running to the cage and I look over and I'm like, Oh dude, it's about to go down, dude. So like, bro, I just bit down on my mouthpiece and it was just a war from that moment on. I, I walked out with, with a coconut on my head from taking a knee to the head from Tiago Silva. Uh, I walked out two black eyes, but 
it was the greatest day of my life, bro. I was so happy. I gave a huge kiss to Tiago Silva. I was like, I love you, bro. This is it, bro. You know, I was so, I was so jacked up. And because we didn't quit, we kept pushing forward. Uh, we made, we ended up making the pro team and, uh, and like, that's what they want to see. They, they want you to see it to not quit. They want you to see to complete the full five minute rounds. Um, because there are a lot of guys that come to the gym and say, Oh, I want to be a pro, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but there's very few that say, I want to do it and do it. And, uh, and me and my brother, I mean, man, I was the first amateur at American top team to come as a paying member and become and make, go to the UFC, go to the ultimate fighter and do all that. I was their first, uh, Product. yeah, student member fighter to make it from, uh, that they didn't like recruit, you know, they're at their, from yeah, their paying yeah. member. You just came, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So it was, uh, it's, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool, uh, growth. And, uh, man, the only way to learn really, in my opinion is, uh, jumping in deep water and, uh, you know, get that sink or swim moment, kind of like how bad do you want it? Yeah, man, because uh, I was going to get into that. I was going to say, you look like an athletic guy. Well, what sports did you play in school? Eh? Obviously, wrestling and football is a no-brainer for yeah. looking at you, man. <laughs> yeah, I grew up playing football and in, in wrestling, man, and uh, but I played, you know, every, Which one every did sport. You prefer? Which one did you prefer, football or wrestling? Uh, I liked football because in wrestling, I didn't, I didn't like to cut weight. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like in you wrestling at what weight? Uh, so my freshman year, I wrestled 140, 140. Oh. Uh, and, and my see my senior year, junior senior, year, I was uh 170. You know, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like because for in in, in the states, and uh, football is in the fall, mm. and then right after football season is wrestling season. Oh, so okay. all wow. all. Sports, all summer, you're pumping weights. You're trying to get big. You're trying to get jacked. And then as soon as football season's over, you got to lose all that hard work you put on, all that muscle, you know, to cut okay, weight. That's, I didn't like that. I, I like the wrestling. The, the school yeah. that I went to, they were, they were the number one in the state in, in wrestling. We had won more, more state titles than any other school. We, we were undefeated for, like, over 10 years. Wow. So the wrestling uh, – credentials pedigree from our school was like was really really good man so like i you know you you learned a lot about yourselves and uh you know it was crazy like I, when i was in school uh fasting would it would come up you know like fasting oh, yeah, fasting yeah. it always came up oh, yeah. during, during wrestling season bro <laughs> oh. and we always would have two days during christmas time it, it was always we would have two days and i would always Ramadan ended up running right into two days <laughs> where where you would have two practices, one at 7 a.m. Uh, and, bro, this, the, the wrestling rooms, it's like 110 degrees. Like, the windows sweat. That's how steamy it is, bro. You no, know, I, so like, did you sneak in, like, uh, some food? <laughs> bro, I, I learned so much. I, after that, I, I got so upset at my parents because my parents didn't make me fast. But, like, I did it just because, you know, you're, you're young. Every, you, you see yeah, where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dude, it killed me, bro. I, I, I got, I beat a guy, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, I pinned him and then I went, I, I won districts. I, I won district title. And then to go to States, I ended up wrestling the same guy that I had beaten earlier in the year, but because of, uh, fasting had weakened my body so much, even though had, it, we had been, we had finished, it'd been like two weeks since, from, since fasting had done, yeah, yeah. I had so much muscle breakdown that like the guy ended up kicking my ass and to go to States. And I was so upset. I was, I was like, I, I was like, man, F this, I'm never fasting again. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is, bro. When you're a kid. Yeah. Uh, but, but it makes you mentally tough and it's all blessings in the long run, man. So, uh, there's still fun, fun times growing up. Yeah. Man. And, uh, definitely relatable stuff. Uh, so you said you graduated in the F F FSU, right, Florida State University. Uh, what what did you major in? Yeah, so uh, I, I uh, so my my father is my father's a physician, my sister's a doctor. So like growing up, I wanted to become a doctor. So wow. I went. Five I went, man. Uh, man, it, it you know you know how it is, bro. The culture, bro. You know, uh, and my father is very strict. Uh, so I I I went there and I, I finished all my pre med pre med studies. So I was ready to take my MCAT, but by the time I got to like my junior senior year, like the ability for me to like like blood and like mm. have have blood be a part of my life, I was like I it just I just didn't like it, you know. So like, but I liked healthcare 
And uh, I know there's always a future in healthcare because people always need, uh, you know, care. Uh, so I, I, so I stayed. I wanted to go to the business side of medicine, and uh, so that's why I started working in the pharmaceutical side. Okay. Uh, and I worked for a company uh, for about a year, and uh, I was just miserable, bro. I, you know, I, I would wake up. My alarm would, would set me. Would, would would wake up to a song that by like Fifty Cent that goes, I get. Uh. Money. I get money. <laughs> no, I, <go> <laughs> I would just be like, I'll go, all right, bro, it's time to make some sales, bro. I'm going to kill it today, bro. You know? But, bro, 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 my soul was defeated, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that was, you know, that wasn't me. And I, one day I called my mom and I was like, I, 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 I was leaving the office. And, uh, bro, I was just like, I couldn't do it anymore, bro. Like, I called my mom and I was like, I, I honestly, I started crying on the phone. And my mom has my mom has heard me cry since I was like a baby, you know. <laughs> so she was like, so she was yeah, like, oh, what's, wrong? What, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And I'm like, "I can't. I hate this fucking. I, I hate it. I can't. I hate this. You know." I'm like, "It's. I, I, it's. It's just like my soul was hurting." And that's when like I, uh, my brother was like, "Yo, let's go to America Top Team," and uh, all the pieces came, came together, man. You know, I ended up, you know, making the pro team after about eight months. Took my first pro fight, knocked the dude out in nine seconds, and then I was like, "Yo, this is it, brother." You know. Uh, you, you uh, by the way, you can swear, man. It's a you know, it's a you know, censor free podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, censor free. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, man. So your brother, yeah. Uh, so you was it you? You go. You just knocked out a guy in, in your pro. Was it your pro debut? One, one more time. In your pro debut, you knocked out a guy in. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was my, so, yeah, yeah, that was kind uh, of like, yeah, 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 that was like my, uh, for me, it was just kind of like my coming out, you know, uh, but in reality, bro, like no one, no one really thinks you're a fighter, even if you say, oh, I'm a fighter, yeah. but no one really considers you a fighter until you make it to like the higher levels, the UFC and stuff like that. Until then, in my opinion, everyone just thinks you're a wannabe, at least how I, that's how I, that's what my interpretation What's that? Especially back then when you were like competing, right? Like 10, 20. Yeah, man. I, for me, like I, I really didn't get any respect in fighting until like I started competing the Ultimate Fighter, the UFC. Those were like those opportunities were like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna show everybody uh, what I'm about, you know. So like those are some of those like those breakout moments that you're just like, yo, just give me that opportunity. Let me get that shot. Let me show you what I'm about. And uh, so it, it, you know, it's it's blessings, man. You just gotta. It's it's just like life, bro. You just got to put your head down and uh, and get to work, you know, and uh, kind of let your actions speak for themselves. So uh, you just talked about your pro debut. Did you you didn't you, have you fought amateur? Uh, no, I didn't fight any amateur. I uh, I went to, going wow. to American going to American Top Team. Like my bro, my first my very first sparring sparring session was versus Thiago Silva versus Alessio Sakara. You know what I'm saying? So like, looks like both Aya. Uh, so like those were, those were my amateur fights and, uh, yeah, yeah, more than amateur my, <laughs> yeah, dude, my fights were in the gym, bro. And like every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, was sparring. And then every Saturday was sparring for just guys that had fights coming up. And back in the time when I was at American top team, when I first got there, the only people that got coached were, if you were in the UFC, you were in, uh, um, Elite XC, Strike Force, Pride. If you weren't in, if you weren't in any other division, you did not get coached. You really? showed up. To, you showed up to the gym to be a body to be the person. A punching bag. Yeah, to be the person that's going to be that's in the UFC, and they would talk in Portuguese on how to knock you out. You know, wow. so like those are so like I mean, and bro, I did Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for eight months straight, just hard rounds. And like against like man against Hector Lombard, when Hector was the Bellator champion, oh, and no one, wanted, oh, no one wanted to spar with Hector because he would knock out everybody, everybody. Yeah. But I would be like, "Yo, Hector, let's spar." And uh, me and Hector would spar, and and uh, he would he would mess me up, and then I'd be like, "Yo, how do you land that shot on me?" And uh, and then he would show me afterwards. But he respected me so much because I kept on coming, I kept on going at him, and I would ask him to spar that he started holding pads for me and he was my first striking coach. Was he like, was, was he like, Hey man. <laughs> oh dude, he would knock people out. <laughs> big, 
and then put the small gloves on and say, okay, now I'm going to knock you out with the small gloves. Okay. That's what he would, he, he was a monster back then, bro. You know, uh, he still is, you know, but, uh, at that time it was just, you know, uh, it was just our gym, our sparring was our sparring sessions were more like jailhouse rules, bro. You know, it was, it was crazy back then. Uh, but honestly, that's how I got better, man. Like I, uh, putting myself in those situations and that's how the coaches started to coach me because the coach would see me not back up versus Hector where other guys would like go hide in the bathroom. If they had a spar versus Hector, I would go and ask to spar Hector, you know, and I would spar him every round, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Saturday, you know, and then they were like, yo, he's, this guy's tough. And then Laborio told the striking coach to start uh, to help me. And I didn't get any coaching until my fourth pro fight, my fourth pro yeah. fight. Whoa. Yeah. My fourth pro fight was strike force until then yeah. i had no I, until then all my coaching was just sparring at, at att and asking the other pro fighters hey you did this to me how did you do that and then i would ask and then and then i would take it and i'd run with it you know um that's how i learned man that those are like my amateur fights and then really wasn't until my strike force fight where i actually had a coach because of laborio uh because i wouldn't back down versus hector laborio told i mean laborio told Cattell, hey uh help out Hyder, you know and and then i ended up i got i got he ended up helping me for my strike force fight and man i dropped the dude in the first yeah, round knocked yeah, him out. so like but i wouldn't have had it any other way because there's so many times like now the gym is completely different now if you come to the gym you have a coach you have this you have that but like uh there's certain there are certain things that you will only know when you've been put in the oh my god i'm gonna die type of situation you know uh where you get put in those situations where your back's against the wall the dude's opening up on you you're tired you know and like those type of situations those like uh those deep waters and and, and honestly bro that's what made me where i where I, that's that's what made me who i am that's what gave me the confidence to go out there and uh do what i do yeah i was, I was just gonna say you so you're mentioning all your sparring partners right which which one out of all of them was like Ah oh, fuck man, I don't I don't I don't wanna like do a round today with him but I have to like was there anyone like that was like that for you? Man, I tell you, uh so when I was gonna fight, I um I had a, I, when I got out of the most recent Ultimate Fighter, I fought uh, Pavel Kush. I fought him for in yes. Phoenix, uh in uh, Abu Dhabi. And uh Dustin Poirier was fighting Justin Gavey. Uh and we were fighting we were fighting one weekend apart. I was fighting I, I was fighting Pavel Kush on Saturday yeah. and then Dustin Poirier was fighting Gavey the following Saturday. Right, yeah. So they asked me, they were like, yo, listen, man, uh, Gavey is your style. You guys like to come forward, throw big shots. Uh, they were like, we need you to help out Dustin. So I'm like, yeah, go awesome, bro. I love Dustin. Uh, bro, Dustin's a machine. He has like some of the best cardio in the game. He never, he doesn't get tired and he spars like he fights, you know? Oh, so it's like, yeah, dude. Yeah. So like, uh, bro, our first, our first sparring session, I ended up, uh, getting my, uh, the cartilage in my nose broken. Um, and then, uh, but I, I came back the next, we came back, we, we sparred, ended up sparring the following Tuesday, but bro, every Tuesday, every Saturday, I mean, every Tuesday, every Thursday was a war, bro, you know? And, uh, it was one of those things where uh, we're like, you have hard wrestling on a Monday. Sometimes on a Tuesday, you'll wake up and be like, damn, I don't really feel like being in a fist fight today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what? In 30 minutes, you're about to get in a fist fight, bro. <laughs> you know, on a Tuesday, you know? So you're like, all right, man, I got to get myself ready for this. You know? And that was like, that was for like a good five weeks. Every Tuesday, Thursday was, was a gut check. You're going to get in a fight. So like leading up to my fight versus Pavel, I, act, I was actually, when I went, when I got to Abu Dhabi, I was tired. I was, I was, I was run down because before that fight, I had like 15 fights in the gym, you know, for uh, helping, helping Dustin get ready for his fight. But, uh, but thank God, bro. Thank God. I ended up, uh, you know, getting in there handling business versus Pavel. And then, uh, and then Dustin uh, ended up TKOing Justin Gady. So yeah. it was like, it was awesome. We were so, we were so yeah. pumped, bro. Cause I was fighting Pavel, who hadn't lost, who, who, uh, who's on, had 22 wins, 22 finishes. He hadn't lost in like 14, 15 fights. Yeah. Uh, and, you know. Yeah, what's crazy is he, he actually, I, I was looking at your record and I saw Pavel and I was like, I know that name. 
And then I remembered he fought in PFL, right, last year, and he beat uh, Abu Bakr and Magomedov, yeah. Khabib's cousin. Yeah. And I was like, Hader beat him. So, and Abu Bakr is in the UFC. So why the hell aren't you in the UFC? You're definitely in the UFC caliber, man. Like, Bro, I beat, I beat Pavel. I beat Pavel. Uh, and then the PFL contacted me, and they contacted yeah. Pavel. It was, it was the fight right after I had beaten Pavel. Okay. And the, the matchmaker for PFL called me and he said, hey, uh, we, we uh, send us your information. We'd like to get you on this season of the, of the PFL. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. Uh, but then they ended up signing Pavel, even though I had just beat him one month ago wow. because, they, because they said, oh, man, his record is so good. You know, he hasn't lost in this amount of time. Oh, come on, man. And I'm like, dude, I just smoked this bro, this guy. But but and that's where it hurt hurt me was they were like oh but you don't have that many you don't have that many fights on your record, and I'm like what are you talking about like and what hurts me is because I have six fights in the UFC in the Ultimate Fighter yeah they but don't none, it. They don't, none of them are on my record bro so like I ha- so they're like oh they're, they're like all right well we see your your record's this but his record's twenty two and three, you know so like we'll we'll bet on him doing good you know. But I'm like, all right, well, I just beat his ass, bro. Watch the fight film, you know? So, like, this is – and this has been, like, kind of the story, like, since I got out of the last Ultimate Fighter, where I'm now having to build my record back up to where I have six more fights on my record. Because, like, promotions are – they're lowballing me. They're not giving me money that I deserve because they say you don't have enough fights. And then – and then there's – and then, like, that's – and then I just get disrespected because, like, oh, well, let's 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 – Build your record some more, and then we'll we'll uh, come talk to us. And I'm like, dude, I have 22 pro fights, bro. I got 21 pro fights, bro. Look at my look at my topology, and you can look up everything. But the problem is, if you go on Sure Dog, it doesn't yeah. have any of them. And then even on topology, it will show the number, like it will show your record. But it but you have to click on history to go look up look up all the fights. So it's just like it's a it's a situation where like. The Ultimate Fighter has helped me, and it has hurt me. I mean, it's yeah. hurt the fact that now, like, I have over, I have what, 14, 15 wins, but on paper, I have nine wins. Nine wins. And, yeah. and like it, and like I'm, I'm now working to get over a double-digit win, so that when a promoter sees my rec- my portfolio, I have over double-digit wins. So like, it's it's been like, you know, that's the part where I'm like, I'm I'm climbing the mountain, trying to climb the mountain back up again. And that's where I talk about, like, or I have my feelings of, of like, my, man, F you. You know, like, my, my, my fuck you list, bro. You know, and it's just, yeah, like, uh, that's what I want to hear, yeah. man. Yeah, man. I hear yeah. That. You know, so, like, that's what, that's what it is, bro. Like, bro, that, 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 my list just keeps getting longer and longer, bro. You know, and it's just, uh, just more fuel to the fire, man. You know? Yeah, man. Because um, I was going to get into that. So, uh, you talked about tough, how it helped you but hindered you. So he competed on uh, Tough ATT versus Black Zillions first, and then on Tough Redemption with Cody Garber and uh, Dillashaw as the coaches, right? So, you know, we hear like fighters, they say, oh, the Tough experience was mentally challenging. Like, you, you've been on it twice, right? Can you explain it for the listeners? Like, yeah. what experience? So it, it, it really is. A, it's the toughest competition in sports as far as uh, the type of volume you have to do. I mean, the first season of The Ultimate Fighter, I, I had uh, three fights in 17 days. Yeah. Uh, the second Ultimate Fighter, I had three fights in 15 days because I, I, I got the wild card. Yeah. So, like, uh, so the type of frequency, you know, the frequent weight cuts, you know, you, you end up, you, you, you weigh 170. The next day, you're 190. And then four days later, you have to be 170 again, you know, yeah. and that's a repetition. You know, you're doing, I mean, I had to cut Wait, I did that three times in 14 days, you know, uh, the second time when I was on this last season, but like the, the amount of growth you go through is the amazing. I mean, there's no other show where you can go and fight three guys in a, sh- and like, I mean, man, this, uh, this last ultimate fighter, when I fought Diego Lima, he has over 25 pro fights. I fought uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson. He has over 50 fights. And then I fought Jesse Taylor, who also has over 50 fights. Uh, and I fought those guys back to back to back. I mean, the type of growth and knowledge you get, like, granted, I did not win that season. But the amount of knowledge I developed, like my fight IQ, literally has set me up for the rest of my career. The knowledge I, like, uh, when I, you know, like the first Ultimate Fighter I did when I fought Kamaru in the finale, 
I, I did great that season, right? But my growth was limited because I was just winning, right? So yes. everything that I was doing was right. Um, but when I, on the second season of The Ultimate Fighter, I was really able to work the details, man. Like I had issues of, I, I made, I would make mistakes of giving my back when I go to stand up, uh, stuff like that. Those little details, little details against the fence uh, when the guy has you against uh some some uh but most importantly I, I i i was able to improve how you set up and approach a wrestler that is looking to time your feet when you go to step guys like kamaru 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 will fight you until you punch him in the face then he's gonna start to wrestle you like a bit like Pavel, right? uh, yeah like a pavel like a jesse taylor jesse taylor is a guy that once the fight starts he's not gonna fight with you he's just gonna hard double hard double hard double after left and right but so your how you step to them is how you have to uh, how you how you approach your press is uh, is how I learned, and that's why I ended up beating Pavel because when I lost yeah. to Jesse Taylor and I lost to Kamaru, I was able to put those my attack how I work with my setups my attack to keep them not being able to guess when I step, and when I am stepping, I'm I'm baiting them, and that's what I learned, and uh, and that only comes from trial and error, dude. So like I for me. Uh, granted, I didn't win the second season, but uh, the the knowledge has literally set me up for my experiences and my victories since then. So, like, that's why I'm like, I'm I'm so like uh, confidence wise, I'm on another level. Uh, because even this last fight, my last fight that I fought um, for Brave, it was my first fight fighting a striker in like maybe yeah. four or five fights. Um, so it was good to go back to that rhythm of, you know, getting your distance set up because until then I was, I was working my setups versus uh, wrestlers. Uh, so then when I fought this guy, it was good uh, because now, um, and, and uh, I, for, I forgot his name, uh, the guy that I fought in Brave. Uh, yeah, Carl. Uh, when I fought Carl, yeah, Carl, uh, you know, he's a tall, rangy striker, yeah. right? So you have to be very clean coming in, very clean coming out. Um, and the good thing is, is that like, I was able to perfect my setups because of, uh, of, of when I break, of me getting my nose broken, you know? So now, um, like brother, when I tell you my attacks have never been more deadly, more, uh, I guarantee you, bro, you do not want to fight me now, bro. I've never been this scary. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I, I, I'm not like I'm not just like smoking hopium or yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, dude. This this last my last loss was the greatest thing to ever happen to me because versus wrestlers, my setups are done. Now versus strikers, I don't care who it is, what what your name is, bro, you're dead, you're dead. And it's only because of I cleaned up my setups and attacks. Uh, so like. Uh, Carl Booth, I love you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for making me better. That's it. You know, uh, I'm very confident in my skills. In a rematch, I will, I'll smoke Carl. I'll, I'll, I'll knock Carl Booth out in a rematch. But he was the man that night. God bless him. Uh, he was able to, you know, it was meant for him to be win that night. It was meant for me to learn that night. Uh, but I know, I know for a fact, uh, in any rematch I have I've, that I've lost, I know for a fact I will win. Uh, it's just because of the knowledge and the growth. And, I saw the same thing that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard when he lost when he lost his fight versus uh, uh, Duran. He said, "I'll never call a fighter better than me. We have to fight twice. Mm. If, if he beats me twice, then he's better than me." But you know, let's talk about it, that. Then. So let's talk about it, that. It's, bro, it's just not gonna happen, bro. I, I, I'm I'm just. Bro, I'm too ferocious. I'm too mean. My skill level is too high. I'm gonna be an offensive volume machine of just throwing grenades from zero to zero and good luck bro yeah so you just talked about your fight with kamaru now yeah and um so i was i remember that ultimate fighter vividly because uh you and luke had a war right uh you won by split and i remember that and i was hyped up man when you won because i see come on man i was like yes there's a you know Muslim brother, yeah, there's an Arab guy, yeah, he's got a similar name to me, and he's, Thanks. you know, he's coming on the show, and, you know, he's, he's doing his proud edit, like, he, he had a war, and then, Kam you and Kamaru, right, and then, um, he's the champion now, right, 
and he just beat your teammate, uh, Hoya Mazadal. Yeah. Do, do you want to get that one back? Like, oh, dude. My t- two big fights that I would love to get back uh, more than anything would be my – I want to get a rematch with Vicente. Yeah. And I want to get a match with uh, Kamaru. Um, I, I'd love to get the rematch first with Vicente just because, like, when, when me and Kamaru and Vicente fought, that was my fifth and sixth mm. fight of the year. Like, I had a fight. I had a fight before the Ultimate Fighter. And then on the Ultimate Fighter, I had three fights in 17 days. And then I had the, and then I had the finale versus Kamaru. And then I had my fight versus Vicente at the end of the year. Like, that's a lot of fights, bro. Mm. I was in the track. I was at six fights, bro. I was in the trenches yeah. for, for not nonstop. And like when I fought Vicente, I was literally, I couldn't have been at my weakest, you know? Uh, and I remember because this, I remember Vicente, when Vicente fought Leon Edwards yeah. uh, and Vicente lost to Leon Edwards afterwards in the interview, he said, oh man, it was my fourth fight of the year. I was really run down. I was tired. My body was beat up. I'm, I'm like, all right, bro. Well, guess what? When we fought for this for the, the time, that was my sixth fight, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, like, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me my – give me. you know, it is what it is. Dude. I, I, I'll, I'll earn my spot. Nothing's given. That's, that's what's good about the sport is that nothing's given. Everything is earned, you know. So you can't say, oh, he just got lucky. Nah, dude. You know, you, you, you strap up the gloves. You put that mouthpiece in. You're putting in the work consistent. So, like, uh, in my opinion, it's not if. It's just when, um, you know, God willing, these, uh, this pandemic – will get you know yeah, under control sooner rather than later but uh you know i got two fights left on my contract with brave so for you know from my mentality now is just go handle business with brave and then see where uh see where the you know inshallah where 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 the, where the, where the road takes me yeah i mean it's like one-on-one with the luke and then obviously with the kamaru you you know i feel like you got caught too soon man like um you're entertaining fire and you're knocking people out. I don't understand why the UFC cut you because if you look at these two guys now, Luke is in the top 15 and then uh, Kamal is champion now. It's like, like there's people in the UFC that, you know, are half as good as you. No disrespect to them. And they're in the UFC. So it's, it was, when I was looking at it, even then I was thinking, where's Hader? Because, you know, like when you're following a fight, you're like, where the hell is he? He's only lost two fights. I'm sure they'll give him one more, right? Generally, it was three fights and then you get caught, right? Uh, I feel like they caught you too soon. How do you feel about that? Like, Yeah, dude, I, I, uh, I'm I, very, yeah, I I was pretty upset about it, you know? It was also the fact that like, bro, you, you, you can't say no to the UFC when they give you a fight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, at that point, like, bro, how, I, how many times can you fight? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had already had... I had, I had my earlier fights in that year were knockouts, 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 fight of the night. I got two, I got a knockout bonus. I got the fight of the night bonus on the ultimate fighter. You know, uh, I, I, I knocked out five out of their eight guys, you know, the black, bro, the black zillions that yeah. at, during, during that, that year, my, I had eight straight fights against the black zillion. You beat Jason eight. Jackson, right? And then you yeah. beat the other guy. Was his name Philippe? I don't know if his name is Philippe. Yeah, I fought, yeah, I fought Jason Jackson. I fought Felipe Portella, yeah. then I fought Andrews Nakahara, yeah. then I fought Portella again, yeah. and I fought Vicente, yeah. and I fought Kamaru Usman, <laughs> and then I fought Vicente again, yeah. you know? And, like, bro, all, you like, you, you, you know what I mean? man. <laughs> Come on, bro. And I knocked out five out of those seven, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you're still going to not, and you're still going to cut me, bro, you know? But guess what, dude? The UFC, they got rid of, they cut Robbie Lawler back in the day. They yeah. cut Nick Diaz. Back in the day, That's you know, true. so they're, you know, the UFC, they're not that, you know, even, man, even uh, my good friend, uh, Munir, you know, did you see Munir? The Munir yeah, 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 yeah. Lezez, he had a beautiful fight, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Sean Shelby, they didn't want to give him the opportunity, you know, so they said, oh, give him, they said, put him against anybody, put him against anybody and, and, we'll, and, and Munir will show you what, we, what he can do. You know, they want to lose, right? They know Abdul Razak would probably d- deal with him, right? But then, yeah, yeah, Munir did awesome, bro. So, like, you know, these are the things where, like, you know, sometimes it takes a fighter to know a fighter, you know, and uh, rather than someone that hasn't fought before but 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 knows the game because he's a matchmaker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, but uh, 
you know, I, I, you know, I, I did have another opportunity. You know, I went to the, I went to the second round of the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, but yeah. the Ultimate Fighter, they're extremes, bro. And in, in what situation are you going to fight three times in 15 days? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna and you're gonna be at your best for those three fights in 15 days. My third fight, uh, everyone had a whole week off. You know, when, when after I had after I had knocked out Joe yeah, Stevenson yeah. for the wild card, everyone had one week off from training, so they were like, uh, they were well rested, recovered. And then I, when I fought Jesse Taylor, I, after I knocked out Joe Stevenson, I ended up fighting Jesse just four, day, four days later, you know? And, and like, while he's resting and recovering in body, I'm just cutting weight. I'm cutting another 20 pounds, cut another 20 pounds, cut another 20 pounds, you know? So it's like, and then I knock out Jesse and I knock out, I knocked out Joe Stevenson. And then they call me and they say, Hey man, you, we liked your knockout. It was awesome, but you lost. So uh, just go ahead and win and we'll bring you back when some fights will bring you back. So like, that's kind of where I've been at. Like, you know, they told me to win some fights. Uh, you know, I was coming off th three great victories. Unfortunately, I had this uh, little little slip up. But uh, but it is what it is, man. You know, I, three facial fractures in the first 30 seconds of the fight. And I, I'm still going forward, bro. So, like, you know, even that, you can, you, even that I didn't lose. You know what I'm saying? I was going forward the entire fight with the three facial fractures in my face, like, in my opinion, I didn't lose that fight. I mean, I lost, but the knowledge I gained and the victory I, I uh, took mentally uh, will set me up for more wins down the road. So, my, honestly, bro, I don't ever see myself ever losing ever again in the terms of because of, like, just my knowledge. My knowledge in the striking game and now my, my knowledge versus fighting wrestlers, I, I just – you become the most – as an individual, as a, as a fighter, you become the most dangerous when you know yourself. When you know yourself as a fighter and you know what you need to do every fight, no matter what, in order to be successful, that's when you can be your most dangerous. So for me, I know what I need to do. If I'm fighting a wrestler, I know what I need to do to be successful. If I'm fighting a striker, there's, I know what I need to do uh, to make my skills better in that fight. And, uh, and that's where I'm at. So like, I, I just, I got my PhD in putting people to sleep now. Like, and that's only has come from, uh, from not not just your, your your wins because your wins are do something, but it's it's your it's your losses. But my losses has 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 shaped me into the dangerous that I not my victories. My victories are my victories are just like a pat on the, as a pat on my shoulder because yeah, I, I knew I could do that. But the 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 losses are what has made me me, and like I wouldn't change anything because uh, it's truly made me as dangerous as I am, man. And I'm very grateful for every every loss really yeah man like uh, sometimes uh, the losses are more important right you learn more than just winning you don't look at your errors right and um how to uh, improve yourself so let's talk about that list so you said you had a fuck you list yeah bro. i want to hear that list so okay i'm gonna like gerard gerard Sal uh, salawi I'm, i think i'm saying it correct right uh, he's a current champion in your division right in brave so how do you how do you feel you match up against him and any other contenders? Like how do you what why what, what are you thinking? Let's talk with the champ first. Yeah, man. I, I'm I uh yeah, he's he's a he's a good welterweight man, uh fun, fun fighter. You know, I coming into the, the Brave division, I didn't really know too many of the fighters. Mm -hmm. I uh, I just started like really kind of paying attention to their to their list. Uh but to be honest with you, bro, I I, uh, I feel I'm one fight away. Uh okay. the type of destruction the type of violence that I'm going to display my next fight and the type, and then I'm going to get on the mic and I'm going to declare some things. And, uh, that's what we want to hear, man. That's what we want to hear. Yeah, dude, I'm going to let everybody know, you know what I'm saying? Like time's a ticking, bro. That's it. You know, uh, enjoy it while you can, bro, because I'm coming in there. I'm going to come in there, you know, rude, rude and in charge, man, you know? And, uh, like I said, man, it's just the time, the time's a ticking, man. I, uh, I am, I, I, it's more of a, it's more personal to me now, man. You know, like I, as I'm in this part of my career um, and I have experienced every part of the, of the good parts of the fight game, the bad parts of the fight game, getting used uh, in every part, you know, like as a fighter, you're going to get used. It's just what degree you allow yourself to get used, you know, but um, so I've experienced it all. And like at this point, like uh, everything's personal to me, man. Everything's personal for uh, everyone. Everyone that's ever doubted me. Everything's personal to me because I uh, of my mission, 
And uh, most importantly, like coming off this last loss, uh, if anybody thinks that uh, I'm done, uh, I'm just getting started, man. Yeah, that's what I want to fucking hear, man, because I feel the same way about our podcast and people there. You know, so I'm loving the energy, man. That's why, you know, that's why, you know, that's why I was excited to have you on because I want to hear this stuff, man. Uh, Thank you. Any, like, uh, other guys on that list? Any Anyone you want to call out for your next fight? Man, I, uh, when, when, is, Ger- when is Gerard and, um, who's, who's, who's he, when, when's the title going to be? I don't even know when that title fight is happening. I'm actually not uh, sure, you know. I'm actually not sure about when the fight is. I was just looking at the list, but uh, I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> but um, honestly, bro, I just want to fight whoever they think is their most dangerous dude. That they're like, oh man, this is this guy is their up and comer. This guy, I'm like, okay, cool, okay. bro. Put me against him, and you're when when you're done, you're gonna be like, oh damn. It's the same thing that happened to me in Phoenix. When I was fighting in Phoenix, uh, yeah. after I beat going into the Pavel fight. The match, the promoter was like, oh, man, this guy, Pavel, he's dangerous. He just knocked out the – he was the main event for us last time, and he knocked the guy mm-hmm. out in 20 seconds. And then we have Hyder. Hyder, he's a, he's, a, he's a warrior. He's a, he's a tough guy. He's a warrior. I'm like, all right, motherfucker, I'm going to show you what's up, bro. <laughs> I whoop Pavel's ass, and then the promoter comes up to me, and after he's like, wow, that was so impressive. I've never seen it. Da, 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 da. Well, guess what, bro? It ain't impressive to me because I know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like – and that's 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 what I mean now. Now everything's personal, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and like, at this point, you're either with me, if you're either with me or against me. And even if you're with me, you could be on my fu list too. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> just think personal to me right now that I don't give a you know what. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, like, bro, this this train's moving. If you're in my way, I'm I'm running your ass over, bro. You know, and uh, and that's it. You know, I, I just I just. I, I really just don't care anymore. Like my, my patience is tested. I'm seeing guys in the UFC that I know I can knock out. Mm. And uh, so like, I got to get mine. That's it. I'm going to get mine. Yeah. I was just going to say that because, um, you know, you know, when you're on top and in the UFC, so you know how people just, you get a lot of yes men, right? Once you start yeah. doing things, right? So you know, after you got caught, was there a lot of people that kind of, you know, were a bit fair with them they kind of bit, do you know what I mean? They kind of expose themselves after you, uh, or what, did you? Do you just have like a tight circle, or do you know? Do you know I'm getting? Do you know where I'm getting at? Yeah, man. You know, I do have a my my circle's always been tight, just because like from yeah. the get go in the fight game, uh, you're always gonna have your doubters, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. uh, uh, even once you're going, people are like, ah, well, he 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 ain't fight nobody. Oh, he's not on this. He's not, he's on that. You know. Mm-hmm. So like, even even. I really didn't even start getting credit till people started seeing me like, you know, fighting uh, on TV. But even then they're like, uh, you know, so it's, uh, I feel like no matter where you go or how far you get, you're always going to have your critics, you know, yeah. and the critics, and the critics, you need them, man, because that's how you get, that's how you get, uh, it's just, that's that fuel, bro. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I just had a hard training session and I need to go back for my second session and I'm getting out of bed and I'm like, Oh my God, everything hurts. But then I remind myself, oh, I know that person's talking shit right now, man. You know, yeah, and I'm like, need that, oh, right? oh, let's go, let's go. You know, and uh, I can't tell you how many times I've done that, man. And it's just like, so for me, the haters, I love them. Give me more. The pressure, I ask for more pressure. Give me more. Uh, my coach gave me an awesome relationship with pressure. You know, obviously, as you're fighting, you're 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 going to go from undercard to you know higher on the card to main card to main event more pressure is going to come more, you know, with more pressure comes, there's more money. So that's more pressure there too. Uh, so my coach used to say, this is, you need to have a positive with relationship with pressure, make pressure your wife. And what do you do with your wife? You make love to her, right? So make love to pressure, ask for more, you know, you want more pressure. I want more. Yeah. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give me more pressure because that means I'm going farther, you know? And, uh, and that's how I've always pre- approached my life. My goals, my mission is to ask for more, uh, put more on my plate, give me more, and, uh, you know, whatever pressures, make love to it, you know? Yeah, that's what I like saying to the haters, man. Like, if you don't want me to do well, tell me how good I am and just make me comfortable, man. Like, make me sit on my ass. The more you tell me I, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm just going to make you burn more, man. So yeah, really, man. Exactly, man. So, yeah, yeah. dude, you, you know it, bro. It's the, it's the right mentality, bro. You know, and, uh, like, no, bro. And nobody, nobody wants to see you uh, 
you know, you have your people that want to see you succeed, but there's people that don't want to see you succeed, you know, because they don't see themselves. I mean, but when I was telling people, yo, I want to fight. I can't wait till I, I, I'm going to fight. People would be like, oh my God, are you crazy? Like, oh my God, so dangerous. Like, oh my God, but you went to college, you have a degree, you can make money, you can, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, it's because you're a weak pussy. Uh, <laughs> don't put your weakness on me, you know? Yeah. And that's another thing. Like, I I'm 36. People are like, oh, yeah, but you're 36. You're getting old. Da -da 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 -da. I'm like, bro, just because you're a weak, old, whatever, yeah. don't put your weakness on me. Because me at 36, I will rape the 27-year-old version of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, I, like in every single way intellectually physically athletically fight iq wise you name it this version of me will destroy the 27 year old version of me so like it all depends on, on your mindset how you uh take care of yourself i mean bro go tell that to floyd mayweather at, at 42 years old go tell that to manny pacquiao at 41 42 years old who just beat the number one awesome contender keith thurman everyone. you know yeah. everyone you know what i'm saying go tell that to michael bisping when he was 39 years old with one eye becoming the yeah. type of world champion you know what i'm saying so like these are tell it tell it to bernard hopkins who was 47 48 years old fighting uh what's his name uh the the boxer uh i, I forgot his name he ended up losing but still uh you know, and go tell that to Dan Henderson, who was 46, 47 years old and fought for the world title against Michael Bisping, bro, and lost by split decision. You know Randy what I'm saying? Couture so, as well, on 49, Randy Couture. Randy Couture. You know what I'm saying? So, like, bro, yeah. these are just, like, it's mindsets, bro. Like, and, like, you, you know, you're, 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 you look at yourself. You're an innovator. You, you're, you're deep. You, you think deep. You're, 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 you're making big goals. You, you, you want to you wanna make everything better for yourselves. Those are the, that, that's a vision that you have. I don't see your vision because I'm not in your brain, right? So it's hard for me to see your vision. I can root your vision on because I, I, you know, you're my boy. I want you to succeed, but I can't see your vision, right? So don't let anybody stop your vision is, is what I say, because like, you don't know what's in my brain. Uh, so don't, don't try to pretend, you know, because like, I know my vision It like, we all want a straight path towards our vision. But the straight path it doesn't always happen. There's going to be, road, right? yeah, dude, ups and downs, bro. You got to have the valleys to appreciate the mountains. And then when you get to the mountains, you got to have the valley so you can climb up tower, tower to the next, the next mountain. You know, the valleys is where we grow. It's where we learn. It's where we climb. It's where we struggle. And uh, and then we get to that next mountaintop. We appreciate that struggle because it makes everything sweeter. Yeah, man. That, that, that's exactly because I remember. I'll tell you something crazy. I was going to say to you after the interview, but let's just say it on here, man. Um, I was listening to you uh, on MMA Roasted. Do you remember when you did an interview with them? Like four years ago, was it? Oh, yeah. Dude, I was listening to you back then. So I was, you know, commuting, listening to guys like you, right? And I was thinking, fuck it, how am I? Like, I was like, these guys, uh, like, you know, the, the uh, Adam Hunter and these, I was like, these guys are lucky, man. They get to talk to guys like you. Oh, hell yeah, five years later, I must have been like 20 years old then, like 19, 20, man. So I'm like, I'm five now. I'm like, five years later, I'm talking to you now, man. And I'm hell like, yeah. thick here now. Yeah. Look at I you, bro. Saying, I was like, thick here now, man. It's, it's crazy. I love, man. I love you see what I mean? Like, it's, like you, it's like you, you paid for ATT and then you go into UFC, man. So it's like people train years and years to get there and you got there and you know what i mean you, you did get there and hopefully we'll see you back there but yeah man this is that's the stuff i want to hear man this is what i like man this is why i'm glad you've come onto the podcast to show people like i'll be honest with you man you know the arab and asian culture like they're very close-minded in a lot of things like especially stuff like what you're doing or even what i'm doing like on youtube podcast and uh, it's nice to see like um you know, seeing more and more coming now since uh, the emergence of like people like Habib and yourself and things like that. So uh, it's nice to see, man. It's quite refreshing. So yeah, man. I, uh, I'm very proud of you, bro. That's what's up, man. I, I'm uh, yeah, dude. That's you, you know the culture, bro. So like, it's uh, yeah, man. Growing up, it's this is it. You're gonna be either a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. You know what I'm saying? And you have to get good grades. And like, so like, these were my, you know, those were my standards. I. I I did what was I was supposed to do. I did my family obligations. I got my, I got yeah. my degree. Uh, but once I got my degree, it was, uh, 
you know, I did my family obligation. That was my, yeah, but just, let's get scrappy, man. But it's crazy, bro. Who knows where life takes you, bro? Like when I was in college, yeah, I'm going to become a doctor. I want to be this. I want to be that. And then like, you know, and then you're in the, I'm in pharmaceuticals. And then the next thing I know, I'm wearing gloves and I'm fighting for my life, you know? <laughs> so, like, uh, so, you know, it's, uh, life's, life itself is a journey. Uh, I, I, I just always try to keep a positive mindset. Uh, we always pray for certain things to happen for us. Like, oh, please let me happen. And a lot of times it doesn't happen when you want it to, but it will happen down the road when it's meant to. And uh, that's why I'm always just like, man, just stay positive, stay the path, uh, put that consistent work. Consistency will lead to positive results, man. So whatever it is you're, you're trying to do, uh, consistency is the name of the game, man. Yeah, because um, just getting into that, what you just said, uh, like it, you said it comes to you at the right time. Like it, we started this podcast in 2018, right? So we were just doing audio. We had 41 subs on our YouTube channel. Me and my brother took one half year break because we had commitments, right? Another thing. In four months ago now, we had 41 subs yet because we were carrying on from then. And now we're over 700 subs and I'm interviewing you. So like I yeah. said... I love it, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, I like you said, man, it happens at the it happens at the right time, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, in that one and a half years, like you said, the the downs and the growth and improving yourself uh, by reading, like doing a lot of things, it happens at the right time, man. So, like, maybe this is the right time, brave. Maybe you conquer brave. You know, you get your good money, hopefully, because you know there is a check running the you know show. So there's got to be some good money, hopefully, man, when you become champ. And then we see you maybe back in the UFC and we see fights with Luke Kumaru at the right time and when you've developed all these areas. And then that's what we want to see, man. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. I tell, I tell you, my name is Hyder. Hyder means brave. Yeah. Like, no. So, like, come on, bro. Like, yo, at the next time I see the Sheik, I got to be like, yo, bro. My name, Hyder. my name is the, I'm, I'm I am the organization, man. I, I am the organization. That's why, like, dude, uh, these next two fights, I'm going to go out there and literally bring the most destruction i've ever been to a fight most you name it i'm doing it and uh my actions will speak louder than my words but then my words will back up my actions and uh everything will be a nice full circle and uh i don't think you, you can't deny me then you know i my vision uh hopefully it goes the way it's supposed to um inshallah, you won't be able to, inshallah bro you won't be able to stop it and, and like I said, it's a story, right? So we started from your beginning and now we got to here. Now we got some motivation. Like, let's, let's, let's get into it. So like I said, you're 36, 37. Do, do you feel like you're going to end your career with Brave? Or do you think, you know what, man? I need that one more shot in the UFC. I didn't get what's mine. And I need this mother effing shot, man. And um, like adding on to that, where do you like, where do you see yourself post-fight career? Like what, what would you see yourself doing? Like have you thought about that or... Yeah, man. So uh, I definitely would love another shot uh, at the UFC just because uh, there are certain fights that I would love to get that check mark on. And uh, yeah, and it's also like a personal thing for me, dude, too, because like, oh, well, you went to the UFC, but you didn't win. You know, like, oh, oh you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, cool, dude. Like, these are the type of things that like I want to uh, – fix and uh before before it's all said and done i want i want uh before i close that chapter there's things 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 that i want i also like bellator man bellator's crushing bro yeah, they got such, oh, yeah, just gonna get into that bellator, yeah they got such awesome strikers i think i think bellator has better strikers than the ufc at least Lima, the Lima, man. Lima, man. Fake, yeah man. between Lima, paul daly exactly. Lorenz larkin uh i mean bro those are some heavy hitters bro like I think those heavy hitters there could stack up against any heavy hitters in the welter division in the UFC. I don't see any heavy hitters in the in the UFC in the welter division of the UFC as dangerous as those three. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, those are exciting fights. I'd love to fight all three of those guys. But actually, Lima is a good buddy of mine. Uh, but yeah, he's another yeah. guy. But still, this, it's the excitement. You know what I'm saying? Uh, of uh, of of what could happen. You know, uh, as a fighter, you want to fight exciting fighters and and. Uh, Cause that's what it makes, brings out the best in you. Um, so, uh, so we'll see what the card, we'll, we'll see what, we'll, we'll see what the, the, the cards laid, man. But I definitely, before it's all said and done, um, I, I would, I would like to get that last. I told you so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, 
don't ever, don't ever count me out, bro. I told you so, bro. You know? And, uh, but as far as like future, future, uh, future goals, I, you know, I work a lot in, uh, uh, I don't know if you're, if you follow like the, the crypto market, the Bitcoin market. Okay, uh, I've, I've, yeah, I've got one of my cousins does it, but yeah, uh, I've, I know a bit about it, but yeah. So you, you're in, you're investing in there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a big, uh, big crypto investor. I started early in 2017. I work for a company called Alliant. Uh, that's, that's in the, the payment, payment industry side of the crypto market. Uh, so that's pretty low, pretty much like, that's what I do now. Um, in between, in between fights and during flexible, fight. Right? What's that? It's flexible, right? So, you know, you can get your training. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's flexible because I can do, I can work wherever the, wherever I have internet. Uh, it's, it's hard because it's a, the market is a 24 hour, seven days a week market. Wow. So when you have active positions and it's three o'clock in the morning and something goes off on your phone for a price wise, you're like, Oh shit. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, so there's no rest period. That's the part where it's like, you know, it's, it becomes stressful uh, because at least the stock market, it's Monday through Friday and it closes at yeah, 4 yeah. PM. And then you're like, all right, cool. I have three days off this. There is no seven. There is no, it's 24 hours, seven days a week. So, you have to manage positions nonstop. You're always, uh, yeah, grind, right? yeah, your brain's always running, you know, but, but, uh, but it's blessings, man. I, I really, really, really am very passionate about the industry and the market. And, uh, it's one of those things that I, uh, I'm just as passionate fighting as I am this industry. So like, it's, it's I'm very, very excited about the future, uh, and where it's going. So when are we going to, um, speak on that, when are we going to see in the UK, man? Man, I was actually hoping to fight on the June 30th card uh, in the UK, man. The, the Brave was going to be going out there. I was trying to get on that, uh, but... Oh, they didn't, didn't go, go, though, right? They didn't go, did they? No, no, it didn't go because of Corona. Yeah, uh, yeah. But they didn't go back to the UK. I'm sure they will, dude. You know, I think, like, yeah, right I'm now... I'm definitely going to be there, man. Oh, I'll be, uh, hopefully, I can get, hopefully, I can get media pass, man. If Brave, if you're listening. Bro, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a corner pass. You can come be in my corner. And hang out with me, and we'll do it right, bro. Nah, my client, don't mess with me, man. Don't mess with me, man. Don't play games with me, man. If you do it, I'll do it, man. I've been in the yeah. corner before. I've been in the corner for a tie fight when I was like sixteen. Sick, dude. So, so I, 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 I have been in the corner before, holding the bucket, doing all that. Love it, bro. Awesome, but, man. It's good. It's emotional, right? Yeah, yeah. It's emotional. I can see everything, and it's crazy, man, how much you can see. And I, I. I personally understand why they can, why they say your corner can see everything, man, in the fight. Uh, sometimes they can see the little uh, gaps. Uh, yeah, man, if you get me on, man, brave, let's let's do it, man. If you come to the UK, man. Yo, UK, you have my word, brother. You have my word. Yeah, man. Let me know on it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, and be my honor, dude. I, hopefully sooner than later, bro. I think like with the cases low, with the cases now, no one from the states can even travel to Europe. Uh, they, they yeah. have all they have all American passports denied, uh, but hopefully, like when the when the vaccines and everything gets cleared, uh, these infection rates will go down and we can start getting some work in, man. You know, uh, hopefully, man. That's what that's that's why you know that'd be a dream, man. Actually, that'd be wicked, man. Like especially with a guy like you, man. And uh, yeah, man, you need to come down, man. We're, we're in Birmingham, right? So we got some top fighters in Birmingham. I'm sure you know, like uh, Leon Edwards, Fabian Edwards. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We got some, Big yeah, bro, bro, the UK fight scene is huge, bro. You, your boxing scene is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The UK loves fighting, period, bro. You guys love fighting, period. Yeah, you man. know, so it's uh, I love, it. bro. Are you kidding me? To go out to the UK and fight, man. I got, I got, man. One of my best friends is Brad Pickett. Uh, oh, he's yeah, out. He's yeah, out. yeah, yeah, Brad Pickett. Yeah, yeah, London. Yeah, man. He's an AT guy, right? Uh, Another AT guy. Yeah, man. So yeah, you... Scott. You know, I don't know if you know Scott. Uh, I forgot his last name. Uh, he's ask him. Yeah, he's the yeah. middleweight champion for uh, uh, what was it? I forgot the Polish the Polish company. Is it in uh, Europe? Yeah, the Europe, the European League. Cage Warriors. K yeah, uh, K KFC is it not KSW? KSW, KSW. 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 in KSW. Poland. KSW. Yeah, in Poland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's the, the middleweight champion for them, dude. And uh, man, he's a great fighter. Great, great guy. Great fighter. Nice. Uh, he's all the UK fighter. fighters. Too. When they come over, we they're awesome, man. I love I love all the guys from there. Yeah, you need to come down, man, because um, yeah, man, uh, it, it was brave in London. Were they gonna come to London? Yeah, they were set to come to London. You know, they 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 uh, they put on 
what they did four events. I think the UFC did 36 events last year. Uh, Brave did 30 events last year around there. So they're Brave is the second largest. Is the actually third? Yeah, I was going to get into that because automatically you think UFC, Bellator, one championship, right? I'm like Brave's up there because look, you got uh, Hamza Chimaev now who's making waves. He's from Brave. And we're getting, like, more guys are going to be coming, man. It's just, it's just inevitable. We've got guys like you. We've got so many guys that there, man, that are UFC caliber, right? Um, yeah, man. And, and like, they're, they're making big moves, bro. I mean, they're, they're the fastest growing promotion. Uh, last year, they did 30 events behind UFC's 36 events. Uh, they, I mean, just, just uh, this month in, in, uh, in August, they're doing three events in Sweden, back to back to back. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one tonight, right? Oh, is it tonight? Yeah, you're right. Um, so, like, that's uh, it's pretty awesome, bro. You know, and, and man, they, they've got good money, bro. It's owned by the Prince. They own, they own the Tour de France. They own two of the largest okay. so- soccer clubs, but valued over $3 billion each. They own uh, McLaren. They own uh, – so, like, they're there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay, they, have more money, they have more money than the UFC. Yeah, yeah. So if they like you, if they like you, they'll take care of you, bro. So like, my goal is to really go out there my next two fights and show them why they should like me. You know, yeah, man, we need the, we need the knockouts, man. We need the you know them finishes, man. That's the that's the goal, brother. That's what we need, man. Uh, so before we like wrap you up, yeah, I'm gonna give you some light, more lighter questions now, yeah. So um, so let's start off with your favorite. Striking technique. My favorite striking technique. Yeah. Are the bombs, bro? Let them <laughs> <roll around. laughs> the overhand hook, bro. If you, you throw the right, if the right hand misses. Left hook is the left hook is clean up. I'm an overhand hook guy, bro. Good jab, good feints. Make the guy bait on your feints and come in with a big right hand left hook. Yeah, man. That's a, the H bomb, yeah. So we're gonna yeah, take the H bomb, bro. Name it. Diane since retired now, so so you can take that one, man. Uh, yeah. George, George Masvidal called me the H-bomb, and I was like, yeah. I'll take it. You can call me the H-bomb, bro. That's the one, man. Uh, favorite submission? Favorite submission. You know what, bro? I've been in situations where the guy gives me, gives me his neck, and instead of choking him, I knee him in the face and I punch him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> so my, favorite, my, favorite, my favorite submission is punch you in the face, bro. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I, can, I can knock you out faster than I can submit. submit. You, yeah. you know, so that I got my, 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 I have my black belt in, in that rather yeah. than, yeah. you know. Do, do, you know, for, actually, before we carry on, do you know the jiu-jitsu? Have you, have you done gi or do you just all no gi? Uh, no, I do. I do everything, man. You know, uh, I do more no gi just because of, uh, of like the speed of the game and MMA is more, is more no gi. Uh, but I do, I, I've done gi, I do everything, man. But, that's uh, such a bro thing to say, but what belt, what belt are you for? Being oh, and I think I'm like, technically I still have like my white belt, but okay. like, uh, well, you're, you're not a white belt, man. Let's be, yeah, but I'm not a white belt. That's, I just don't ever wear my gi. You're going to be I, competing I, in a uh, white belt tournament sandbagging, right, man? <laughs> just joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm probably like, the, I'm probably like a blue or purple. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Okay, so uh, it's favorite submission getting uh, the H bomb right uh, in the face. Yeah. Um, so okay, you're stranded on a deserted island, right? No one there. You can pick one martial art to defend yourself. Which one is it? It's gotta be hand to hand, though. I have to pick one skill to defend myself. Yeah. Uh, oh, it'd be box. It'd be boxing. boxing. With your hands, yeah. <laughs> it'd be stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, no matter what, you 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 got to. At some point, you got to use your hands. You know, yeah. and uh, it always starts off with your hands, anyway. So, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I. You want to be able. You want to feel. Com- There's nothing worse when you're trying to hurt hurt somebody with your hands, and the guy is gonna smile at you and say, "That's all you got," and he's just gonna punch you in the face, and just like a guy like Robbie Lawler, you punch Robbie oh, Lawler in the face, he's gonna smile at you, and he's gonna say, "Oh, I'm now I'm gonna kill you." You know, like. That's what I like. I, I, I like that type of mindset, you know? Yeah. And um, so uh, moving on to that, your brother now, Mehdi Hassan, uh, 
Okay, so <laughs> as you know, all brothers fight, right? So would yeah. you choose crap? Or were you um, choose like, oh. When we were younger, we, we, would, we would get in the, my, so uh, my, it's my sister, then me, then my brother, Mehdi, then my youngest brother. So there, there were four of us. And growing up, sometimes my brother, Mehdi, would pick on the youngest brother. So then oh, I'd man. have to, then I'd be like, yo, don't pick on, you know, and then we'd end up fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he was picking on the youngest, my youngest, my little, but my little brother, he ain't, my, my brother, Mehdi, he's uh, six foot two. He's bigger than me. He's so. bigger than me. So like, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't be good for my health. <laughs> um, you know, it wouldn't be good for either one of us. But like, no, we uh, we're always in each other's corners. Um, man, he, he he's uh, you know, we dream together, we live together, we fight together. Uh, it's uh, it's really an awesome thing, man. Uh, anytime you can share uh, goals with you know some of the same well, blood, like like yeah. our, it's like our podcast, isn't it? It's by me and my brother. So my brother yeah, brother. Bro. so that's oh, what how. I'm awesome. How awesome is Hassan, that? Hassan brothers and the Mia brothers, man. So, yeah. That's Let's cool, go. Man. Good shit, man. I like the beat, uh, like bro. Yeah, man. Uh, then, uh, so, uh, moving on from that, yeah. So, what, I want you to give me one word to describe these people, yeah. So, what I mean by one word is, it can be personality trait, a skill they have, whatever. Whatever comes in your mind, right? Okay, let's start with Dan Lambert. Uh, he's the man. He's the man. I mean, honestly, he's he's the man. He uh, he spent so much money uh, on American Top Team, uh, two different facilities. Uh, you know, he's really helped fighters make make their lives. You know, bringing fighters from all over the world, putting them in homes. Uh, he's the Godfather. Godfather. All right, I like that one. I like that one. Um, Mike Brown. Uh, the best. I love Mike, bro. Mike Brown is the the number one MMA coach you can have, dude. Like he he knows. I mean, bro, you're gonna have your coach be be your world champion, and not only a world champion, but uh, one of the best MMA world champions ar- around. I mean, WEC champ, WEC champ, uh, knockout Te- artist. Technically, technically, he was a UFC champ if the division got. Or in technically back then, right? Yeah, and he's man, he's a uh, amazing collegiate wrestler, a black belt in jujitsu, world champion in MMA. Uh, his knowledge of the game is like I've never seen it, you know. And uh, and that's, I mean, Mike Brown is the man. That, that's why he's won the coach of the year. I think like two times in a row now. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And um, okay, uh, the next one was uh, Ricardo Loborio. Uh, he's the he's the wizard. Lebo is just like me. He, uh, he knows moves that other people don't know. He invented moves. You know, people people come people come to see him, and he and and he travels all over the world just just spreading his knowledge of of jujitsu. I mean, his his fight knowledge is just uh, it can't be replicated. I mean, he was a he, banker, right? He was a banker, right? Like uh, yeah, yeah. He was in Brazil. And he, he was, was training, a, and he was training. That is crazy, man. That he got to that level. That, the bank, the banker, they actually like sponsored him just because he was so good. But he, uh, yeah, man, God bless him. He, he, I mean, anytime you're, anytime when you're an inventor of moves, yeah. you're the Mike, he's the Michael Jordan, yeah, you know, man. he's the Michael Jordan. So, uh, Liborio wizard. Yeah. And, um, okay. The next one, that I'm, uh, GSP. Yeah, GSP. He's the man, dude. I uh, I have a, I got a lot of love for GSP. Um, I think he's the best pound for pound. Uh, Big statement, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I I do. I think he's the best pound for pound. I think uh, intellectually wise, he's the smartest fighter. Uh, fight IQ, you know, with what he needs to go into a fight. Um, but I think clearly, like you know, the one seventy pound champion, one eighty five pound world champion. I mean. He finds a way to win, and he is – he never – he wasn't a collegiate wrestler. He wasn't, you know, kickboxing world champion, none of that. He was just uh, very smart and uh, a great athlete, and he had a great work ethic, man. So, like, uh, I, I say pound for pound. Okay. And um, Fedor. I mean, Fedor? Oh, dude, I love Fedor, bro. What's the one word, bro? The last emperor, bro. He's the last emperor, man. Fedor's man. I'm, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, there's too many words to put there, bro. He he was my that was my favorite fighter growing up. Was Fedor watching all of his fights? Uh, he actually, my brother fought in the M1 Global uh, Heavyweight Tournament, yeah. and uh, Fedor was uh, was ringside. Uh, so it was cool, man. It was that was awesome bucket list. It's like just like getting to fight. I I got an opportunity to fight in front of Tyson. Uh, wow. Awesome bucket. List. Uh, my brother getting fight in front of Fedor. Awesome bucket list. I remember when I met Fedor, 2016, when Bellator came to London. It was my first ever event, and it was free. And I met Fedor and all these other guys. Like It was like, my first ever MMA event going live. Uh, you're it. right, man. That aura you feel off of him. I didn't know what to say to him. I was just like, yeah, this aura guy. I was just like, it's just like, it's hard, isn't it, when you see guys like that. And then, because I've got like all the pride DVDs, and it's just like, freaking hell, man. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just love his mindset, man. That it's just like that, uh, that so, cool, calm, collected, kind of like serial killer type <laughs> look, where you're just like, you don't know what he's thinking. He's just like stone faced. I mean, bro, that's badass. I love it. Okay, just getting into that, Mike Tyson, because they, I love Mike Tyson, bro. My, my, I mean, what can you say about Mike Tyson except like, I told Mike Tyson after I knocked the dude out that I'm the heir of Tyson. And he said, fuck yeah. And I was like, oh, I just oh, it's not it's good. Good. it was the big, greatest state of my life. I, uh, you know, it was actually the second time I met Tyson. I met Tyson at the Ultimate Fighter uh, during, the, uh, during the tough season. And then uh, to be able to fight in front of him was, I mean, I'll eat, your, I'll eat your children. I'll eat your babies. Uh, <laughs> praise, to, praise to Allah. You know? I was like, yeah, go, bro. Go, bro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's savage, bro. Okay, Greg Jackson. What's that? Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson. Oh man, I don't really know him personally, man. But uh, from what I hear, man, he's a phenomenal uh, striking. I mean, uh, you know, uh-huh. mental coach. Yeah. Uh, but I never, I, I haven't had the pleasure of uh, meeting him or speaking with him. But uh, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at John Jones; he's world champion for a reason. Tiago Alves, Pitbull. Uh, that's my best friend. Yeah, so best oh, what, what's the, oh, best friend, okay. That's yeah, it's my best team. friend on the, on, the, on the team, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that's, that's, my, that's my boy. That's, that's my brother. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 he was one of, my, one of my number one inspirations to get into to, uh, in fighting was, uh, was, was Pitbull. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's he's definitely a guy we've been watching for years, man. I remember yeah. watching him, uh, he knocked out Matt Hughes and then UFC 100, man. I was... What, 2008, 2009 it was? 2008? Yeah, man. I watched yeah. that. I was 13 years old, man. Believe it. I was staying up. I was like, fuck it. Let's watch this, man. I was like, yeah, man. I was popping into the sport. So, uh, yeah. It's fun. Gym, man. Yeah, me and Pitt, man, we're, 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 we're best buds, bro. We, we were, when we were in our younger days before, you know, he, was, he got married and stuff, we would go out to the clubs and stuff and, and uh, <laughs> we pretend we were twins, you know? And uh, it was so funny, bro. Yeah. One time I pretended I was Pitbull and I got some, and I got some ladies. It was so funny, bro. Yeah. Oh, you look. I'm, I'm Tiago. Right? And then Tiago was coming. Out. Yeah, Pitbull was coming out of the bathroom. I said, yo, go away, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you really my side, man. You're really my side, mate. Yeah. She's looking for you, bro. She's looking for you, but she's fine, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, John Jones. John Jones, man, he's awesome, dude. God bless him. I met John Jones in uh in Vegas. Uh, he, he, you know, God bless him, bro. Great athlete, uh, great pedigree of families. I mean, his two brothers are in the NFL. Uh, I think he has a lot of potential to be the best, man. And uh, oh, though I thought my my teammate Tiago gave him a great uh, gave, gave him a great fight with uh completely Tiago, torn. Tiago, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Tiago, it, Tough dude, man. Uh, Habib. No yeah, cause, yeah, man. God bless him, bro. I, uh, I said prayers for his father with his father's uh, mm-hmm. passing, man. Uh, but yeah, man. Blessings, bro. It's tough, tough beast, bro. Another, uh, another Muslim brother, bro. You know. Yeah. And uh, right. I think I think we should. Uh, okay, I gotta say one more. Actually, Muhammad Ali. The best there ever is. The best there ever is, man. Even if you dream of beating me, you better wake up and apologize. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, bro. I love it. I'm so mean to make medicine sick. So, okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I make medicine sick. All yeah. right. The best thing. Last one. Last one. Hey, Hassan. Oh, 
I wouldn't want to fight him. That's all I know. I wouldn't want to fight, but I guarantee you that uh, I'm just getting started. And uh, my next two fights, they're dead men walking. Whoever they are, whoever they are, they're dead men walking. All right. That's the, that's why I want to hear, man. So uh, anyone you like to shout out? Any people and any sponsors you like to shout out? Uh, man, I just want to say uh, lots of love to everyone on all their support. Um, I appreciate you guys giving me the time and uh, to hear my story. And I uh, hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, much love and God bless to all the healthcare workers and making uh, everybody healthy and happy and try to get everyone back in order, man. So God bless, much love, and appreciate you all. Where, uh, where can people find you on social media? Uh, yeah, on Twitter, you can find me at Hyder Hassan. And on Instagram, you can find me at, at Hyder Hassan 170. 170. Dude, dude, you've only got 5,000 followers. What the fuck, man? You should have 50,000, 100,000, man. What's going on, man? I don't know, bro. I don't know, man. It's uh, hopefully it's a, work in, it's a work in progress, bro. Inshallah. Hopefully this podcast gets bigger. And, you know, you get more because you should have way more, man. This is, you know, I mean, that's that stuff gets me angry, man. It's like what the frick, man. I appreciate, it, bro. I'm gonna be. I'm a new subscriber to your channel, bro. So now you're 701. <laughs> no, we're actually 730 right now. So you'd be 740. So, yeah, even better, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Much a lot. Yeah, bro. But that, so hopefully, man. You know what I mean? Like, you come on in the future, and we'll get you on, and maybe you could come on with Tiago or someone, or even your brother, or we'll, you know, we'll do some, you know, bro. for your next fight. You need to come Done on. Done deal, man. bro. We'll do it for American Top Team, bro. And, 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 that's what I said, man. AGT, man. And you know the London. Come on, man. You gotta, you know. You got it. Bro, I've, I've, I've already put it out to the universe. I've already yeah, sent yeah, it out. Yeah. So now it's just let the universe do its thing. And uh, inshallah, bro, I'll see you soon, brother. Inshallah, man. Take care, man. I hope everyone enjoyed that podcast, man. So take care, man. Hey, to ask some people, man. That was a you know, fun interview. So take care, bro. You know, it was my honor, bro. Thank you so much for giving me the time, bro. Send my love to your brother and uh, stay safe. Be easy. And uh, man, I look forward to coming back and uh, giving you guys some good news on update on some flights coming. Inshallah, I'm going to take it, bro. My man, best, brother. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Heyda Hassan. Um, I'd like to thank him for coming on the show. i also like to thank Rizwan Ali from MTK MMA for sorting out the interview. If you like these kind of interviews, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the podcast. And make sure to press the bell notification. Peace.